Okay, I'm going to show you how to create a Hive game today. So first of all, you go to Hive games, which are either through this shortcut on the home page or through the menu on the left. You can then click Create Hive Game. And then you choose your word list. You can do it from your list, your favourite list or our scheme. I'm just going to click from stage one. The ones with the phonics next to them uh, means that the letters will be sounded out rather than the letter names. So I'm going to choose this one, but I'm going to go for letter names. And then I'm going to click play. Now the difficulty means the different tiles that the children are given. So in extreme, they're just given a whole keyboard and the word is read out and they are then able to choose the correct letters to type it, which as many people use this as a type of interactive spelling test is probably the most popular option. However, it depends which pupils you are playing it with. Easy, they are given the exact right letters. They've got to put them in the right order. Medium, they've given the right letters plus a couple more. And hard, they're given a few more again. So you've got the amount, the number of words. They're allowed six to 20. Whether you want them in a specific order or shuffled whether you want to show the word. Most people have this off, but if your laptop is not connected to the interactive whiteboard, this means that it will show on your screen, which might be useful if, for instance, somebody didn't hear the word. Autoplay means that the game advances on its own, so you don't have to keep clicking next word. Everyone can play at their own pace. And then finally, you've got hub audio which means that if you've put it on, the sound comes out of the teacher computer. So if your laptop is connected to the interactive whiteboard, many choose this as the better option rather than the sound coming out of 30 iPads. However, if you are working remotely, make sure that this is turned off, otherwise the children won't hear the word to spell. And then if you want to show the leaks, so again, if your laptop is connected to the interactive whiteboard and you want to show how everybody is doing, you can do that. You can tend to do the top three, all of them, or you can turn it off, which is what some people prefer to do. I'm going to just keep it on so that you can see what would be seen. And then I'm going to click create game. Now I've also got another screen here logged in as a child. So we can play as well. You can see what they see. So here we input our code. And then click join. And you can see I have joined. So you can wait until all of your pupils have joined. My screen just says waiting now until the teacher then clicks start game. Party. Party. And you can see the points there. You can click view leaderboard. Next word. Happy. Happy. You can see there how many I've got correct in my score. Save. I do some wrong as well. Save. No points for that one. And then you need to click end game. This is what the pupil will see. This is my pupil screen. So it shows exactly what you've got right or wrong. Maybe if they've got an iPad, you might want to take a screenshot of this and perhaps put it on Seesaw or something where a parent might see it to see what they've got wrong or right on their spelling test. And then I'm going to go back to my teacher screen. So that's what the children will see. On my teacher screen, I can now exit that. Here it says finished. If I click on more, it shows my players. I only had one player in my game. And it also shows the ones that were incorrect and what they were spelled as. So that's also very handy. 
It's a really, really great tool and just a way to make weekly spelling tests a little bit more exciting. <laughs>